we cannot break it from this side. Really now? Now there's a worthy prize. If only to work so far away. Let us aim for greater precision with our next attempt. One never can have too many of these. Let us take care when and how we put them to use. chest. What harm could there be in having a peep? Alt! You are approaching the gates of Vernworth, capital of Vermont. Nom if you've an entry permit, an invitation, or proof of citizenship, present it now. I see. So you are to meet with Captain Brandt. I shan't impede you then. Come with me. I was informed of your coming would be arisen. Captain Brandt, you should know that this individual fought valiantly to defend the troops. The watchhead told me himself. As decreed by the great will of our world, there can only be one arisen. That arisen now resides within the palace. Indeed, he is our sovereign and the rightful ruler of Vermont. It follows, therefore, that this ruffian before us is naught but a pretender. You must submit to questioning. If you value your life, you will not attempt to flee. I shall conduct the interrogation myself. Stand watch outside. I 
beg your forgiveness for my insolence, Your Majesty. If the Queen Regent had learned of your existence, I fear your life would have been in peril. I had no choice but to treat you as a pretender, lest my actions draw suspicion from watchful eyes. Then you have truly lost your memory? In that case, mayhap I ought to explain the situation before we proceed. You, and no other, are the sovereign. The only legitimate ruler of this kingdom. Some days passed, you confronted the dragon in the village of Melv, whereupon you became arisen. The people rejoiced, for our true liege had finally appeared, and in Vermont's long years of council rule. Yet, not all celebrated your coming. Your arrival would have robbed the Queen Regent Deeser of everything. During the time of the previous council, she acted as a queen in her own right, ruling the palace as she saw fit. And just after the council's passing, when twas all but certain that her son would take his father's place. Word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. To Deesa, your majesty's very existence is naught but an obstacle to her own family's continued prosperity. The assassination of the Arisen is an impossible feat for mortal hands. Thus, Deesa chose to abduct your majesty while you recovered from your wounds, in order to rob you of your memory with a fell curse and sell you to Batal as a slave. Following that, she prepared a replacement to serve as the sovereign in your stead, a mere puppet. However, with your majesty returned, I have no intention of twiddling my thumbs as Deesa plays her games. I shall devise some plans to further our cause. Pray, visit me a night in a tavern that we might discuss them. This one's cleared of all suspicion and has my permission to remain in the capital. You are to trouble the good sir no further. Are we clear? Pray forgive me, I'm in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> Consarn it! Get back here! You there! Did you see an urchin in a cap run past just now? Can you tell me which way he went? Many thanks. I'll catch that wretch yet. You're a kind one, aren't you? Twould seem I am in your debt. In fact, there's aught I would ask of you if you've the time to spare. Aha! There you are! Oh, apologies, but our chat will have to wait. Till next we meet. Farewell. Good to see you, Master. I thought you might like this, so I picked it up. Here you go. An ox cart ought to make our journey easier. Fewer monsters are to be found on the main road. Though carts travel only by the sun's light.
Ingredients are plentiful hereabouts. Shall we see if there's ought to be found while we're here? Anything better than this. Even the grave. I'll put this to use. Moment. I have an eye for people, and my instincts tell me you're of trustworthy ilk. I'm in a bit of a quandary, you see. I'm to be gone for a week, with no one slated to mind the house in my stead. Fear not. I only ask your name to list as a tenant. You needn't bother yourself with the cleaning, and I don't expect you to stay cooped up in there, neither. I'd be much obliged if you'd simply consider my home a waypoint on your travels. Sound appealing? Then come on by and have a look-see. I've taken the liberty of marking the location on your map. Welcome to the stop. We serve all manner of fine ale. Wonderful. Majesty, your timing is impeccable. I just thought to call for you. Tis not a matter for prying ears. Pray, let us speak out here. As I informed you when last we spoke, the palace is filled with the Queen Regent's sycophants. 
Should Deesa denounce your majesty as a false arisen, few would elect to doubt her. Yet if we are to prove your identity, I believe there is no occasion more suitable than the coronation. It was delayed so that the sovereign, that is, the false arisen, could convalesce in the palace, but the date has now been set. The central players in the court ought all be in attendance. It would be a fine opportunity to display your majesty's power. None would be able to deny that you are the true arisen then. There is a problem, however. Entry to such an event is limited to the chosen few. Only select members of the nobility and citizens who have contributed greatly to Vermont's continued prosperity will be granted entry. If your majesty is to be counted among them, you will need to attend to a number of tasks. Pray, allow me to summarize them for you. The citizenry have called upon my soldiers to cull monsters that plague the land. I dare say, it would be a fine contribution were you to accomplish these tasks unaided. What say you? Might I ask for your cooperation in this matter? I thank you, Your Majesty. There are three locales that I've seen significant trouble of late. The first is Trevo Mine, to the northwest. We've had reports of goblins swarming in great numbers. Next is Half Village, west of Burnworth. I believe soldiers have already been dispatched to call an infestation of Saurians there. Finally, there is a call for someone to locate a group of soldiers tasked with delivering freight. They were last seen crossing the second bridge on the eastern edge of Vermin. We have been charged with the felling of monsters. We ought take the time to evaluate our... There is much we ought to tend to. If we are to strengthen your majesty's claim, you will need to infiltrate the palace to gather evidence of Deezer's misdeeds. I hesitate to ask something so dangerous of you, yet I fear we have few other options. I have attempted to do the same through my own channels before now, though I have yet to uncover so much as a whisper of her plots. Would that I could undertake the task myself, but my station prohibits me from reckless action. What say you, your majesty? Might I ask this task of you? I shall ensure that the door to the Queen Regent's office is open between midnight and dawn. Pray use that time to conduct your investigation. Pray, follow me. There is much we ought to tend to, if we are to strengthen your majesty's claim as a true arisen. Of all those who serve the Queen Regent, there is but one who I have no doubt will lend his support to your majesty's cause. I refer to Waldar, a magistrate. Many a time as Deza demanded Waldor amend the Code of Vermont to her own benefit. And many a time as the magistrate refused her, for he's loyal to none but the spirit of the law. As a result, he now sits in a cell beneath the palace. Our laws dictate that your majesty is our rightful ruler. Thus, as the staunchest supporter of the law known to the palace, I'm quite confident that Waldor will be willing to vouch for your majesty. What say you? Might you be willing to aid me in arranging the magistrate's release? I've prepared a means for you to enter the palace dungeons. Pray, take this. This mission demands the utmost secrecy. Prithee be cautious. Your Majesty. Should you be discovered, I will be unable to lend aught in the way of aid. Would you mind coming over here? We're here, Master. You've come. Glad to see you, friend. So, what say you? 
Would you care to live here in my absence? As I've said, you needn't worry about tending to the place. Many thanks, friend. I knew I could count on you. I'll stop by again in a week's time, but till then, farewell. We will find much better rest in an abode than out in the elements, methinks. Let us... Use of it while we can. Right you are. A good sleep will ensure we are prepared for the mo- Good morrow, everyone. Come, we've much to be getting on with. I don't know about you, but I am full of vim and vigor. On to the nearest location. The soldiers delivering freight were last espied near Vermin's eastern edge. That's not far from here. You have our gratitude. Lead the way. Oh, there's something written here. Shall we take a closer look? Greetings. Welcome to the Guild Hall. Here, we conduct all manner of procedures pertaining to vocations. If there is aught I may assist you...
Forgive me, but I'm afraid we are not accepting registration for you see, as we currently have no archer staves or great swords on hand, we are unable to outfit new members. And we cannot simply purchase more, as the delivery of arms intended for the local armory and other guilds in this domain was plundered by goblins. So regrettably, I cannot assist you. Unless you were to procure a weapon yourself, that is. Let me see. What else can I tell you of our guild? Methinks Roderick will be able to tell you aught of the stolen shipment. He runs the local armory, and we purchase almost all of our stock from him. May fortune smile upon you, sir. Whence might we procure such a thing? Is this way? Oi, friend. Klaus sent word that you've agreed to rescue some of my pilfered equipment. I'd be grateful for aught you can reclaim, truly. Fair warning. Goblins are behind these ox cart raids, I've since learned. No doubt they're hoarding the stolen arms in their den from the tell of it. Their lair lies somewhere along the western road. Pray do be careful. It, if all were to go awry, it would weigh heavily on my heart. Losing my wares for good would make me sore. But no sack of gold can compare to a fellow life, eh? Oh, um, yes? Uh, I, I possess no ill intent, I, I assure you. Uh, I merely wished for a closer look at these bows. Uh, those of other races differ so in design from our own, you see. I cannot deny I am curious about them. That's all it is, mind. Uh, curiosity. I, I have no desire to actually own one of these contraptions myself. Uh, and even if I did, it isn't as if I could purchase one would be unseemly for an elf to aspire to such a thing. No matter how they fascinate me, it isn't to be. You would simply give this to me? Oh, that is most generous. I would gladly accept it. Uh, you have my gratitude. Fascinating. Tis not dissimilar from an elven bow in make, and yet tis unlike one in near every respect. Such as this bowstring. It looks quite the same, but the tension is altogether different. I suppose that, that comes from using different materials. Well, why do you stare? 
Perhaps you find it absurd that I should marvel so at a bow not of elven make. I suppose I sought inspiration, for I, I confess I find myself rather lost. My aim has suffered of late, such that my wayward arrows simply will not strike true. The timing could not be more unwelcome, as my skill with a bow is to be put on trial anon. Forgive me, I should not expect you to know of our ways. I, I speak of the trial of archery, a time-honored elven custom. Every elf undergoes this trial when they reach maturity. Till we succeed, we are not considered to have come of age. I have been training most diligently, yet my skills ne'er seem to take shape. Indeed, I fear my aim has only worsened with each new failing. I grew so vexed with myself that I sought to learn a foreign form of archery rather than master my own peoples. Thanks to you. I now have the means to do so, though I dare say I shan't make any headway on my own. Say, would you be willing to give me a demonstration? It might be just what I need to find my aim. Please, sir, you give to me this bow. I only ask that you show me how to wield it. Many thanks. I'm indebted to you twofold. But this is no place to practice. Would you be so kind as to meet me by the ruins north of Trevo Mine? That's where I train, you see. I'll be able to concentrate on your display of bowmanship much better there. I do hope you'll join me. For now, I shall bid you farewell. Take this! Tis something I found. I wanted you to have it. Well met, sir. Forgive my presumption, but were you the one who gave my granddaughter that medicine in Melv? I thought so. <laughs> She's not stopped talking of her adventure since she arrived home. You have my sincerest thanks for aiding her. That girl's always running off on some fool's errand or other, for all my chiding. Once she gets an idea under her bonnet, there's simply no talking her out of it. Now listen. Tisn't much, but I'd fain offer you a discount on my wares. Pray, make good use of it, won't you? That looks promising. Any ideas? Welcome and well met. Don't think I've forgotten. Always a pleasure. Would you mind coming over here? Gather round, gather round. Treat your ears to a tale by a master storyteller. Yon path leads not to our destination. If you would prefer to explore, I shall guide you another time. The Arisen decides our path. We have but to follow. That was some quick thinking. My own master will wish to hear of this, I'm sure. What could yon chest be hiding? I must know. 
Let us hope your curiosity will be rewarded. It is a remarkable treasure we found. you run so fast I can hardly keep you in my sights arisen let us endeavor to keep up though we are less fleet of foot Unless I am much mistaken, we have cause to visit a place not far from here. Perhaps we ought to go there first. What say you, Arisen? Master, I hope you like it. I found it myself. Always sets me to thinking, this place. It's quiet now. I've never seen aught like this. I'd wager my own master would be astounded to learn of its existence. Done by dusk. Wonder if anyone else should have passed.
Let me get that. I would appreciate your swift return, master. A fell unease begins to gnaw at me when you are gone over long. Tis not our place to hurry the arisen. My apologies, sir, but as you are not a member of this establishment, I cannot permit you through. Material. Useful things, these. I'm sure we'll find a purpose for it in due time. We shall wait here till your business is done.
was it I had planned for the morrow? If you must go off on your own, there's naught to be done. I only hope you'll return sooner rather than later. So, you've come. Captain Brandt bade me allow you passage. We're acting so chummy. I have been waiting for you, Arisen. There are useful ingredients to be gathered here, I'll wager. No harm in picking a few. That Sir Ludolf is a real lecher. Tell is. He keeps a dozen or so mistresses at once. And just the other day, he praised my wife for her beauty. You know what that means, don't you? He wants her for himself. I tried to change the subject, divert his attention elsewhere, but he's not one to back down so easily. He'll find a way to get what he wants, even if it means taking it by force. <laughs> 
vile reprobate. Oh, I can't complain. Know your place. A treasure chest. Shall we see if we can't make our way over to it? Welcome and well met. Don't think I've forgotten your discount. Ow. I'll knock it. Always a pleasure. Well, it takes two to make a sale. And this seller had nothing. to tempt us with. Our funds are better spent elsewhere. The Arisen is ever prudent in the application of coin. The rules act 
your name. Well met. You are come to you will soon forget the fatigue of a long journey when treated. to the foremost hospitality. Be in all Vernworth. Much obliged. Lucian eludes me, but I'm certain there is one. I'm just grateful I get to lead a quiet life. Tad Rowdy. Let's see if I can get one. That's it. I've had enough. Clear off. And don't come back till you're ready to do business properly. But I've got the coin, I swear it. I simply just... Where is it then, eh? Bring the coin, all of it, or I'll call the sentinels on you again. Are we clear?